Welcome to California Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are at 23 ABC in Bakersfield, the hometown of the incoming leader for the Republican Party in the California State Senate. Her name is Jean Fuller. Mm -hmm. You're the incoming leader for the Republican Party in the California State Senate. How does that make you feel? I'm very excited. I'm very honored. It's a yes. wonderful state, and we have so many great opportunities if we can continue to work hard. And what's nice about your ascension is it's historic. Uh, you will be the first woman That's to true. be the GOP leader, the first member of the Kern County delegation yes. to lead uh, a party in the Senate, yes. and you're Gene Fuller, <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting next to me. I mean, what does that make you feel? Well, I'm really, really proud. I mm -hmm. love America. I love my right. community. I love my family. And um, there are there's so much good work to be right. done to Im improve our economy, to get water. Sure. I'm just I feel so lucky, you know. Uh, actually, you know, I was born in Shafter, California, oh, really? and no stoplights right. in the town. Oh, and when my parents brought me home, it was a, a train box car was the house we lived in. <sighs> and so um, to to be able to be in America and to have these kinds of opportunities and to be able to help so much, it's been great. When you <laughs> ascend there are four leaders. Mm -hmm. There is a Democratic leader, Republican leader in the Assembly and in the Senate. Three of those four will be women. Yes, and that's totally historic. <laughs> and it's also very fun. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> and there are people I've known, so we've right. worked together in the past. So t both Republicans will be women, mm -hmm. and then of course the Speaker yes. is a woman. Do you think that will change the tone and tenor of Sacramento? <laughs> I know it's an interesting and maybe a suspect question, but what do you think? Well, I, I think we have a lot to bring to the table, right. and I think um, it reflects that America and California are on the move. Right. I think it reflects that women realize that they need to step up to the plate, and also women are coming up through industry and have more experience uh, to get into politics, more financial backing, and uh, the opportunities are greater right. for them. And then, as I said, both Republican leaders are women. That really is remarkable. That is very remarkable. You know, I don't mean to be stereotypical, but if you look at voting patterns, yes. women yes. have pulled away a bit from the Republican party but maybe now they'll start pulling back yes and mm -hmm. you know when I first came into the Senate I, I, there was only two of us and Mimi Walters really? was ah. going on to be a congressman right, right. and so I was going to be the only one and wow. so to to see and it's all of our colleagues the guys have been just as helpful in all the of elections that we all pull together but to see these bright young women coming up is just exciting and what about your Democratic friends because mm -hmm especially women. Again, I don't mean to be stereotypical mm -hmm. or suspect, mm -hmm. but is there something about women where women work together well? Well, we have a bipartisan women's caucus uh, that I've been a member of for quite a long time right. in the legislature, and we have uh, collaborated uh, over, like for me, nine years. Sure. And so um, we know which issues we can, we can work together right, on, and right. we know which issues we can't. Which is fine, <laughs> which is good. I want to speak about one piece of legislation that you have been carrying mm -hmm. now for quite some time. It's known as SB uh, 111, and it focuses on public schools near military bases. Yes. Give us a sense, just broadly, before we get into the nitty gritty, of what that looks like in California. Well, in California, basically, what that means is many of our bases have large territory around them right. that's like like Edwards and China Lake and Twin right. Palms. It's all desert. There's nothing to tax right. there. And the second part of it is that they're very uh, distant from other schools. You can't just bus them to another school in your district. And these are, these are all schools that are public schools, right. but they were placed on military bases because the kids were so of far course, out. And um, in California, what that basically means is that uh, people come from all of the United States and are the best we can recruit, and they want their schools to be really, really top-notch on those bases, and they don't have other alternatives. So for us, uh, this bill is very, very important. And for better or for worse, some of these schools find themselves in disrepair. Because the way we fund uh, school construction in this state is that you um, have right. a, a local property tax matching right. Piece and if you have no local property tax or it's all federal land and there's nothing to tax, then the, the rest of the district, if there is a district, has to try to to fund that. But in many cases, there's no there's no other district help. But here's what's remarkable: there is a federal program, and yes. that federal program through the Department of Defense will help these schools near military bases. And the program is quite generous. I yes. rarely, and I'm sure you're the yes. same, have seen a program where the federal yes. government will match four to one. Yes. So the local 
school district needs mm -hmm. to raise 20 percent of the mm -hmm. funds mm -hmm. and the federal government the department of defense will uh, match 80 yes. percent but as you described senator the problem is many of these school districts can't even get the 20 percent right. because they that's have right. no property tax base that's that's absolutely correct and so other states are getting this money and even though the the t top 11 California schools that were in the worst shape for reconstruction, right. renovation, and repair. Mm -hmm. And these are things like plumbing, oh. roofs, I mean, it's, it's terrible stuff. Right. Um, they have been unable to access that money, and now the DOD has said, look, California has had their opportunity for the last couple right. of years, you haven't done it, so we're going to start giving this to other states. Well, that would leave <laughs> us having to pay for $240 million of already assessed Problem right. problems that need to be done in these schools that we'll have to pay for ourselves without getting the four to one match. So you have been running a bill yes. that would address this problem. the The amount that needs to be allocated is sixty one million dollars yes. to get the two hundred and forty million dollars. That's correct. One could argue, again, you know, with a budget of a hundred and what is it, twenty billion, yes. something like that. That yes. sixty one million is not a lot of money. But there have been challenges getting a bill like that through the legislature. What can you tell us about that? I know it's ancient history, but... Well, actually, this has been a bipartisan effort. No one's voted against this bill. I got this bill all the way through to the appropriations file. But two years ago, I got this bill all the way through to the appropriations uh. file. When it got to the appropriations file, uh, the very last night, without warning to us, we, we received a notice that for whatever reason, the Department of Finance decided that this wasn't a good investment. So then we made the case this year that it is a good investment. Right. And um, we, brought, match. Yeah, we brought the DOD right. out and had them explain. Right. And again, we got all the way through the legislature. We're, we're at the last stop, the appropriations right. in the assembly. Um, and I was able to get uh, the finance office to put in the budget an intention to fund I this, see. but no, but no funding. So that's why we have to continue to have the bill is is to keep the press. But the bottom line is there's no promises of the money, and everybody admits that it's a good investment. It's an absolutely good investment for California, and our kids deserve it, especially you know those kids that have no other options. So how far are we? from losing the match. I mean, do we need do we have a deadline that we need to say we will fund it? We the DOD personnel that came out and testified basically said that it's very likely that by the end of this year or next oh year that other states will have already claimed it because they're opening the floodgates to let them do that and or if there's another sequestration for military yeah. we could we could lose that match. Along the same lines of another bill that's running, it deals with electronic threats yes. which are all too common. We know some of them are veiled, but be that as it may, mm -hmm. we still need to address this. Talk to us about SB 110, if you may. Well, the main problem is that the uh, penal code in regards to education hasn't been updated for electronic media threats. Mm -hmm. So electronic 3D media threats, text, social social media, all right. those kinds of things um, are 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 not firm about what you can do about them. This basically would give law enforcement, our Bakersfield PD are the ones that came oh, really? to me and told me okay. about how they needed this right. bill and what they needed, what the fix needed to be in order right. to make it uh, after the Liberty High incident right. where a thousand kids were out of, out of right. school for you know, a couple days. And basically what it boils down to is that the bill will give the tools to for them to go in if it's not directed at a specific principal's name or a specific school's name if it's directed to all of the students at Liberty High School right. or some social media event and as, and but it has to be that it's a, a clear right. threat to harm danger violence you'll come back and tell us more about these yes. two bills her name is Jean Fuller <laughs> she you. is the incoming GOP leader in the California State Senate we are at 23 ABC in Bakersfield California my name is Brad Ponch we thank you so much for joining us on California Edition